Welcome to the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Review Podcast. On this show, we showcase reviews on guns, gear, and anything else a gun enthusiast may be looking for. We strive to evaluate products from an unbiased and honest perspective. I'm your guest host, Jake Challen from Gun Guy Radio, and we have a couple special guests this week, Peter, a.k.a. Agent95, and FI reviewer. Hey, Peter. Hey, how's it going? And uh, I, I'm sure some people are, that are listening are, are like, they're either like, is that Peter Palma? And they're like, either like, they're crossing their fingers <laughs> for it, or they're like, no, I'm turning this off. One of the two. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Ryan Cross, Hunter of Design, hunterofdesign.com. You, you, you're the guy that designed all the awesome <laughs> artwork for the, for the Firearms Insider webpage, right? That's right. It's my best work. That's right. Only uh, you only do the best work for us, right? That's right. So, um, Ryan, tell me, how did you get into graphic design? Uh, I just into taking art classes in high school and just drawing and painting a lot, fine arts. I was kind of that moody gothic kid who was just drawing pictures all the time, and uh, you know the colleges send recruits to high schools and kind of tell people about the programs, and um, I had a pretty good relationship with my art teacher, and so she was pushing for me to be in a career in art, so it was either animation on one hand, which is drawing the same thing over and over and over and over, or graphic design, which I kind of, it seemed like it encompassed so much, and so I just kind of dived right into it, and it turns out that um, it's one of the things that I'm best at, making logos, doing websites, you know, drawing out your ideas and then bringing them on the computer and bringing them to life, and then choosing your favorite industry and uh, making cool things for all your buddies in that industry. So, very cool. Were Were you always into the guns, or did that come later? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, my dad was always teaching me how to hunt and and um, shoot trap. And then when I got about thirteen, he bought me my first pistol, which is a Ruger Mark III Hunter twenty two auto loader and from there man I just got bit by the bug so uh, I mean just can't stop man awesome yeah. well, I asked you about your kids earlier and you said they're all in the safe so I I, <laughs> I hope they're guns I'm crossing my yeah, hand yeah. Yeah. yeah until I'm blessed with uh, you know someone I can pass on the legacy to just enjoying the hobby while I have the extra finances very cool. So, Peter, uh, how did uh, how did you get into guns? I'm um, actually pretty new into guns. I've been I've been I first bought my handgun about five years ago, and uh, ever since I fired my first round, I just couldn't put it down. I got more into it. I ended up buying my second Glock. I picked up a Glock 23. And then it was uh, me and my buddy, we both got into it together, and then he entertained the idea of building an AR-15, which was scary at that time. I had no idea how to put together a rifle. But uh, together we built so many ARs, and uh, it's just, it just stuck to me. I have the black rifle disease, I guess you could say. <laughs> awesome. Well, um you may have noticed uh, this show is a little bit different from the past ones. That's because we've promoted Devin to the senior producer role. And uh, we're changing the format around a little bit. Uh, Mike uh, and Devin and I, from um, you know, Mike, the director of the Firearms Insider, have been talking about uh, changing it a little bit. Um, you know, we're always striving for excellence here at the Firearms Radio Network. So... We're seeking hosts for this new format. Devin uh, will handle all the post-production work, you know, all the technical stuff that's uh, a pain in the butt for a lot of us. <laughs> he's uh, he's doing an awesome job at all, all the editing, posting, all the web stuff, and um, so he he's got that handled. And we're just looking for some hosts to fill this new format where it's more of a discussion panel about different gun reviews, different uh, new products on the market, um, 
different uh, tech gadgets, apps, stuff like that. So, you know, we're looking for experienced um, hand gunners, you know, experienced basically people that have kind of a, a generalist type of uh, experience in the firearms world where they've handled a little bit of everything, handguns, rifles, shotguns, comp- maybe a little competition, maybe a little, little bit of reloading, uh, maybe a little bit of gunsmithing. Now, you don't need all of these, but, you know, maybe you've dived into some of them, and if we can find one, two, or maybe even three uh, people for this, you know, gun and gear review discussion panel, then, you know, some of you will have strengths that the other ones won't. So that's what we're kind of looking at, uh, you know, kind of diversifying so that we have a a good knowledge base about everything we talk about on the show. And until we find uh, these new hosts, uh, myself and some of the other guys on the Firearms Radio Network are going to jump in here. Um, and with guys just like uh, Ryan and uh, Peter here to, to uh, kind of fill the gap until uh, we find you know some great new new hosts and uh, you know big shout out to Devin for stepping up uh, to the uh, senior uh, producer role and um, so if you're interested just uh, shoot me an email at Jake at firearmsradio.tv and uh, we'll uh, you know bring you on, maybe do a little bit of a trial period, see how things go. Well, so we're to the uh, new product spotlight segment. So have you guys seen the uh, TACCON 3MR trigger system? Yeah, it looks mighty tempting. So I saw it for the first time today. So it's a drop-in trigger. Uh, Ryan, why, can you kind of give the listeners a rundown of what this is? It's a uh, drop-in trigger assembly for your AR-15, and it also comes with uh, its own safety selector. Um, so basically it gives you the happy switch, but not in the NFA sense. So it's still one trigger pull per firing. Uh, however, um, it takes advantage of the recoil and it makes the trigger pull um, extremely short. It is still four and a half pounds, um, but it's a much shorter distance. So you'll find that you'll be able to pull the trigger with um, greater speed, and almost like firing fully automatic. So it, yeah, it kind of acts as a, a bump fire stock would almost, right? Is that is that yeah. kind of the theory? Yeah, well, but without. The, Without the, the full rifle reciprocating in front of your face, yes. So, I, I there must be a technique to this, to to holding it just right. Is that is that what you, you see here in these videos? I, I'm a it, little. It does. It doesn't look so like it. It, it seems that when you um, move the safety selector into the the go mode. Um, you know, it just enables the trigger assembly to, to make it extremely light. You know, you can put it back on semi and just have a regular single stage um, four and a half pound trigger pull. Um, so it doesn't seem like there's any extra, you know, with like the bump fire rifle, you have got to pull forward with your supporting hand and keep your finger locked against the, uh, you know, like a bar in front. It seems like you don't need to quite do that, which to me, it seems like a great advantage because you can actually get your face right down into your optics and, you know, take precise shots. Whereas with the bump fire, I mean, the whole thing's reciprocating in front of you, and and your your face isn't contacting the stock. Um, so I see the price point is uh, estimated to be five hundred dollars. Um, wow. So, I mean, a bump fire stock, a uh, or a, a bump ski. Slide fire solutions; those are all around like the three hundred, four hundred dollar range. So this is, you know, and the next step up, but it's still thousands of cheaper dollars cheaper than getting an actual NFA firearm. Yeah, about ten thousand cheaper. <laughs> yeah, you're going to spend that much in ammo. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, so it's it, it, it by switching it to the quote unquote full auto mode. It, it basically lightens the trigger to something so light that just the the very gentle recoil of the two two three will make it kind of go full auto. Is that right? Correct. I wouldn't. 
I guess using full auto is is not the right terminology. Shoot um, faster. <laughs> shoot faster. Yes, I mean it, it would make the trigger resets uh, at a faster rate. That's true. The the trigger still resets every time. Yes. Um, but but yeah, it's a, it's a, you know B B A T F E compliant. Uh, so it's not a N F A. So I mean. Sure, it's five hundred bucks, but you know, you save um, tax stamp or whatever. Um, and I mean, really, a, a real full auto, you know, like we were saying, is but like an old um, M sixteen is what in the fifteen twenty thousand dollar range. Where, where do those things run anymore? I mean, yeah, yeah, definitely up there. And I watched the video, and um, I'm sure. The person in the videos had practice, but I mean, it was almost at uh, Jerry Mitchellek speeds as far as just, you know, if you didn't know that they had that trigger in there, you would assume that they had spent, you know, hundreds of hours and you know got a very special trigger finger. So, uh, yeah, that's. I thought true. about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I mean, I I could see. Yeah, if it's. If it's as easy to use as these guys make it look, I, I could see you know maybe someday on a high-end rifle doing something like this. Yeah. What, what do you think, Peter? Um, you said it was about four pounds of pull, right? Yeah, I believe I read four and a half. They wanted to keep it compliant with uh, law enforcement agencies. I see. Because uh, I know the Geisley, they do make a really lightweight trigger also. So I'm wondering if you could do the same with that. Well, is the 4.5 pound, is that the non-fun switch mode? Um, I believe it still is. It's just the reset is incredibly short. Oh, so it just switches the reset. Yeah. Okay. I, I might, I, hopefully I'm not misspeaking, but from mm -hmm. what I saw in the video, that seemed to be what was... Okay, well, yeah, that, that that would make sense. So pre-orders are starting December first for this. So it's a tech con. It's at techfirecon.com. T a c f i r e c o n. Tactical Fire Control Inc. Um, where where are these guys out of? Do you guys know? I, yeah, uh, let's see. Trying to find that on their website, but I don't really see it. It's um, made in the USA. It says that, but um, well, I'll I'll move on to the next one if you find it. You, you know, just to shout it out. So, uh, I'm uh, linking to a, a Brownells link here in the show notes because you can now pre-order at Brownells the um, Magpul. SGA stock sets for the Mossberg series of rifles. So the Mossberg uh, 500, 590. What what other models are there, Ryan? I'm I'm not that up on my Mossbergs. Uh, the 500, the 590A1. Um, there's a couple, uh, you know, like the Maverick 88, which is kind of a the more economic value uh, version. The the 500 Persuader. Okay. Well, these um, are, are going to be out in just uh, just a few weeks. For, uh, I um, just recorded a product spotlight segment on Gun Guy Radio with Paul Levy, the uh, category man manager at uh, Brownells, and um, we talked about the. <coughs> and by the time that product spotlight releases in about two to three weeks, these are going to be uh, out in the wild. So, but. You can pre-order them right now, one twenty-nine ninety-nine, and uh, they come in black, uh, flat dark earth, and orange, FRN orange. How, <laughs> how about that? You, you uh, looking to get one, Ryan? Well, I've already got a, uh, I've got an eight seventy, but it's the Express uh, Magnum, so. The I've got the the SGA stock on it right now, um, but the, you're not the, the Magnums have a longer um, forend, and actually it it comes underneath the receiver when you when you pump it back. So the um, 
everyone says that the Magpul 4 end won't work on the on the Sprex Magnums, but me and my drum will say otherwise. So <laughs> I might give it a shot. <laughs> well, very cool. Um, you know, I was talking with Paul. You know, this this is like the perfect stock set, and and for listeners, it's you know the 4 end has that Magpul look and feel to it, and then the butt stock it has adjustable. Or, or what? What is it? Swappable cheek risers and then swappable recoil pads, and, and uh, you can actually take. Um, there, there's, it's modular, so you can take. You know, you can change your length of pull and whatnot. Am I saying that right? Ryan? Yeah, it com- Yeah, yes. It comes with about three or four spacers, and they're about <coughs> uh, half an inch um, in diameter. And so you just take your 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 butt stock off or your your butt pad, that's kind of like the cap, and then you can slide on the spacers for your length of pull. The um, the comb, which is the the part that you rest your cheek on, uh, that's actually the um, sold separately as far as the different heights. The one that comes with the stock is just flush, um, so you can go to the store and, and pick up a, an extra high one. And then just swap that out. Yeah, I mean, proper stock fitment is, is so important, especially for shotguns, especially if you're going to have this as like a slug gun or something like that, you know. So Yeah, absolutely. The uh, The higher combs would be for using optics, I imagine. Um, I've just got the stock comb on there right now, and it lines perfectly up with the rail and the bead. So I was I was thinking, you know, th- this would be like the perfect set to buy if you buy like an old beat up police trade in 870 or 500. You know, you could you can pick those up for nothing at a gun show, and then slap these on it and be like a brand new gun, right? Absolutely, yeah. So, are, are you a shotgun guy, Peter? Uh, I do have a shotgun that I haven't used in a while. But I definitely think they're fun to shoot. It's probably one of the most fun weapons to shoot. I think. Do you uh, do you like the this Magpul look? Do you like the styling of this? I do like it. Uh, it is different. It really resembles the uh, AR-15 handguard. So it probably pretty much that's what it is. Uh, it's not too bad. I do prefer the old style. Uh, Handguard for the shotgun, how they come, but the stock looks pretty good, and yeah, the, it's awesome how it's pretty modular too. So, yeah, something else that's modular on it is it's got the MOE style fore end, and so you can, um, you know, pretty much attach. You could attach a vertical vertical foregrip or a flashlight or mm-hmm. anything crazy, you know. Uh, but but yeah, it makes it very very modular. Yeah. I think that's where Magpul really shines. They uh, pretty much make any accessory attachable to everything you have. Absolutely, and you know, you know, you're getting a good quality product too when you go with Magpul. I mean, Definitely. unless you buy a Chinese knockoff on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> Every time they do a, a product release, I feel like it's a uh, Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory announcing something and. In the gun world, it's just like, oh yes, 1911 grips, sweet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man. For those of you listening or watching that don't haven't heard the news, Magpul has released 1911 grips, um, and they're they're polymer, right? Is that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The of, same. Of, of course, <laughs> what? it's Magpul. Of course, it's polymer. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I, I think those are actually pretty cool looking. So uh, let's get into uh, some of the main uh, reviews here. So uh, I wanted to uh, uh, let's start off with um, the Elzetta ZFL M60 flashlight. So this is a flashlight I, I got to play around with. It's actually my everyday carry uh, pocket flashlight right now it's um 
you know, it's it, it, it it's probably the toughest flashlight out there. I mean, uh, Dustin Ellerman from Top Shot has dropped this out of a helicopter onto concrete, and it it works just fine. It chipped the concrete, <laughs> <laughs> so you know it keep keeps on working, and it's um just one little tough flashlight. Mine is mine is a 235 lumen model, but there's also they just released some. So these are modular too. We were just talking about how Magpul is so modular. So these, the tail caps and the bezels are modular, and you can do like 80 some or 96 configurations, with, um, you know, using the same body. So, you know, they they use the common um, CR. Uh, is it 123? What's, what's 123A. The, yeah. Yeah, so it uses that common battery for, well, at least common for tactical flashlights, and either the two-cell or a longer three-cell version, and then you can put whatever um, bezels you want on it, and, and changing the bezels can, you know, take them to six, 650 or even 900 lumens, depending on the, the you know, how many... Um, batteries you have and how big the bezel is and then uh, the tail caps they're they're all have just two um, purposes I guess so this one uh, you click it and it's a solid on and then you back the tail cap off and it's a strobe now some of them uh, is solid on you back the tail cap off and it's uh, it's a low beam or whatever and so they make it real simple, so there's less things to fail on them. Um, but they they have all the options, so it just depends on how you want to basically assemble this, you know, online before you order it, or you can order it with a couple different bezels or tail caps and have that modularity uh, where you could mount it to your AR-15 with a pressure switch, and even their pressure switch is tougher than nails because their pressure switch that that's one of the I guess one of the big things that fail uh, with a tactical lighting setup is is that um, wire or that actual pressure switch well Elzetta's is fail proof where even if you cut that wire you can manually back off that tail cap just a little bit of a quarter quarter turn or so and it turns it on so no matter what, you can still turn your light on. Um, but you know, I, I'm really impressed uh, with these lights. Um, the the modularity, they're waterproof. They have videos online, <coughs> videos where they take them apart underwater, put them back together underwater, and they they still work uh, all the while being submerged. Um, they're a hundred percent made in the USA. Even the batteries inside are made in the USA that they ship with. So I don't know any other flashlight that you can do that. You know, get that uh, USA hundred percent. I, I I was just blown away that even the batteries are made in the U.S. Um, so you can even get some custom custom uh, engraving done on them for an extra ten bucks. Um, I have a few pictures on the Firearms Insider review that I did on it. Uh, they're both mounted to uh, an AR-15. They have just a great AR-15 mount. That's actually how they um, got started, was was making light mounts, um, tactical light mounts, because they felt that you know, all the tactical light mounts out there were inferior. And then after they made... You know what they felt was the best tactical light mount for a uh, Air 15. They started looking at the different lights that they could recommend to put in this mount, and they figured out, well, you know, there's not that many lights out there that are that good. I mean, a lot of these, you know, they they might say they're they're drop tested and, and stuff, but they're they're pretty weak when you actually put them up to the kind of uh, torture that an, an operator or someone you know risking their life might put these through. So they decided to uh, create their own you know virtually indestructible flashlight because you know people's people's lives depend on them. You know police officers, people in the 
you know, military, um, their lives could depend on a flashlight on their rifles. So I think it's a great mission they have. And, uh, price point on these, um, are not, you know, they're not super cheap. They're MSRP for about 175. You can find them on retail on Amazon and other, other places online. You can find them for about, about the same, about 175. Um, I think Alzada has flat rate shipping for anything you order for 695. Um, if you have an Amazon Prime account, you get free shipping. Um, you know, they're they're lifetime guarantee. Anything ever goes wrong, you know, just they'll take care of you. They're good good people, made in Kentucky. Um, and uh, you know, my only uh, negative, I guess, on this in my review was that there's no belt clip option, which I think they could actually make one that would fit um, between the tail cap and the body, but maybe maybe that would interfere with something. But it, it's made as a tactical mounted you know, weapon light, so it's not necessarily, necessarily made for pocket carry like I'm using it for. Um, so I gave it a 9... 0.0 out of 10 on the Firearms Insider reviews, so that's uh, amazing is what uh, what category that review falls in. Um, so you can check that out, firearmsinsider.tv. Uh, what do you guys think? What, what kind of tactical lights do you guys like? Don't all jump in at once. So. <laughs> I don't have stuff. any uh, six... <laughs> Um, you know, the only lights I have are, uh, come with the Picatinny mounts. So the uh, the Streamlight TLR1, and I think I have the uh, one of the Walmart like thirty dollar versions. That, um, but uh, I've been looking at getting something like the LZ or the another version of the Streamlight. Well, let's uh, move on to the Midwest Industries uh, Gen 2 handguard. Um, this is, a, I actually just recorded a product spotlight with Paul Levy from Brown Owls on this as well. And, um, we may or may not be giving one of these away for the gun guy radio giveaway just in December. I'm not saying, I'm just saying, <laughs> what um, are you saying? <laughs> I, nothing. I, I know nothing. <laughs> So, uh, Peter, you reviewed this on the Firearms uh, Insider. So, tell us about the Midwest Industries Gen 2 handguard. Yeah, um, I pretty much, uh, when I was building my precision rifle, I was looking for a handguard that was pretty light. And there weren't too many options out there. And I kind of stumbled across the Midwest Industries handguard from a referral from a friend. And uh, I realized how light they were. I really liked it. I liked the design. And the price point was actually really cheap. So I decided to pick up the 15-inch uh, rail. And uh, surprisingly, this is actually really thin. It's very thin. But uh, I, I slapped it on. I tried it. And it didn't add any more than 10.9 ounces to the whole rifle. So I thought that was pretty amazing. So you, you put this on a 20-inch uh, precision rifle. What what uh, uh -huh. what kind of optic do you have on that? I'm running a Vortex uh, PST 6-24. Um, nice. Yeah, it's a pretty nice optic. I shopped around a lot, sold a lot of optics before I actually ran into this one. But, yeah, it's... Uh, it's a great rifle. The handguard is amazing. I'm just surprised how light the, how light the handguard actually is. I, from my understanding, it's probably the lightest handguard in the market right now. So it's lightweight. It, it's tough. Um, so who's the target market for this type of handguard? Uh, the target market is actually pretty much anyone. Uh, if you do a lot of running gunning, It'll definitely help you because it's super light. Uh, I know a lot of three gun people are very anal about the weight of their ARs, so it'll definitely target them too. Uh, 
the only negative thing I see about this hangar is because they're so thin that after rapid fire it starts to warm up. So I would definitely wear a glove when you shoot um, when you use this. So what uh, what kind of colors do, does uh, this come in? Uh, I believe it comes in the black FDE and uh, olive drab green. And what's uh, what's the price point? You said you got the 15 inch. What did that run you? Uh, I paid 189.95 from. I believe I purchased it from Primary Arms. They were having a discount on the handguards at that time. But if you go to their website, uh, I believe they still have that special introductory price. So it's still at 189.95 right now uh, for the 15 inch. I'm assuming most people will probably buy the 12 inch, which is only 179.95. So the 12 would be like for mid length, and you have a a rifle length. Pretty much mid length, rifle length. They also sell a 7 inch, 9 inch, and a 10 inch. Which uh, it's amazing. I'm looking at the website right now, and the lightest, I guess, the seven inch is only seven point one ounces, and this includes the weight with the barrel nut that they include. That's right, because it has a proprietary barrel nut, but it actually comes with the um, tool, I guess, for for putting that on. So, how was the installation? It, uh, it actually comes with the tool, the barrel nut. So how how is the installation right, for yeah. you? So it comes with everything you need, pretty much. Uh, very easy. Just remove the stock barrel nut, put the new one in, and the uh, rail just slides right through. It has these guides, which helps with the anti rotation, and it's very solid. The build is very solid. The design is pretty nice, and uh, I believe they also sell these panel kits, which kind of widens the grip of the actual handguard. We should definitely help with the heat. Okay, and it also has um, modular like rail pieces that you can screw into it, depending on where you want to mount something. Yeah, they do come with. Uh, I believe it came with three pieces, and they're all different lengths. And the awesome thing also uh, with this handrail is it comes with a bipod stud, and I know most uh, rails out there. You have to pay an additional thirty dollars just for that, so that was pretty neat. Yeah, it's some good good built-in value there. So it's uh, made out of what sixty sixty one aluminum. It's mm -hmm. hard coat anodizing. Uh, only a one point five inch outside diameter. It's free float. Um, yeah, seems seems pretty awesome. So what uh, final score did you give this, Peter? I gave it a nine point zero. It's a pretty amazing handguard. Uh, I would have given it a 9.5, but I think there's definitely room for improvement. I don't know what it is yet, but 9.0 is still a very strong score. Very cool. Yeah, I think uh, I think I might have to look into this for a future build. It's um, this is uh, what Reed just uh, from the AR15 podcast, uh, the host of that Reed. He picked one of these up for his latest build, and he's very happy with it. Oh, nice. <clears throat> yeah, I'm actually thinking about getting one of those, too, now that I'm looking. <clears throat> so you had to use a, a low-profile uh, gas block? Yes, I had to use an aftermarket low-profile gas block. But I don't think it has any trouble fitting with any other ones, as long as it's low pro. Did you install that yourself? Yeah, I did. I did. I wish I could show it to you, but it's actually in my buddy's house right now. <laughs> oh, you're a nice guy. Hey, can I borrow <laughs> a gun, Peter? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, me and my me and my buddies do. We we leave uh, firearms at each other's house just in case we happen to be around the area. We could go shooting together. So I he has one of mine, and I have one of his. Okay, yeah, we know you're really running guns. Don't lie. <laughs> yeah, you got me. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, well, uh, Ryan, let's uh, go on to the uh, AK 
ARS Adaptive AK Rail. So what, you know, I saw this come up on the Firearms Insider. It looks pretty uh, ingenuitive. What can you tell us about it? Well, uh, I just picked up a Wasser 10, and um, it had come with a, as many Wassers do, a side rail. Um, and the owner who I purchased it from, put it put the optic probably about two and a half inches above the dust cover. It was um, obscenely tall. Um, so I knew after I made the purchase, that was the first thing that would have just drove me insane uh, with, without correcting um, so I was looking at mounting an optic on an AK, what my options were, and the ACARS was one of the ones that I st stood out the most in all the forums. A lot of people mentioned the ACARS and then a, um, a similar um, from, from a, a company in Texas, I can't remember the name, um, <coughs> but basically it's a, uh, it comes with a dust cover, but Everyone, know, if you have an AK, you know that this cover wobbles, um, and it varies depending on what variant you have. Um, mine is a Romanian, and luckily it doesn't wobble all that much, but it's still it's not 100%, um, you know, concentric with the bore and and wobble sturdy proof. So the A car is actually mounts on to your rear sight leaf, um, which is kind of like a, a hinge. And so the um, dust cover that it actually comes with, which is a, a great plus, because if you've got an AK that's been through, you know, some battles, whether your own or in another country, your dust cover is probably scratched uh, quite a bit. So it comes with a brand new dust cover, and it's actually um, a little bit thicker, uh, very nice. Um, but anyway, the dust cover has a, a mounting block on the very end of it that's got two prongs. And the rail that's hinged onto the rear sight has uh, two female points in, inside the Picatinny rail. So basically, you just slide the dust cover right into the rail, and then it snaps closed. So the rail, which is attached to your receiver via the rear um, leaf, actually keeps your dust cover from wobbling around. It actually sturdies it. So they're advertising that you can put an optic on there and zero and shoot, and then open your dust cover and do your maintenance and close your dust cover and hinge the A cars back down and you'll retain zero, which is a pretty significant claim. Um, so, I mean, your AR-15, obviously, it's permanently attached to the receiver and you don't have that problem, but with a, an AK, um, having your optic mounted rear of the, the rear sight, most people put a forearm on there with rails on it and mount it forward, kind of like a scout setup. Um, this is a pretty unique product that I, I even though the price point was 100 and um, it's 120, yeah, 129.95, and it was only offered in two two distributors, um, Blackheart International and then AIM Surplus. I purchased through AIM Surplus before, but they were actually out of stock, so I went through Blackheart International, and their shipping was actually pretty pretty quick. It came probably about five business days. Um, so I'm pretty satisfied with it. I've um, used it quite a bit. I like that I can keep my wood handguards the way they are um, and not have to put um, a railed handguard on there. I probably will at some point, but I kind of like the, the, the rustic wood feel, kind of more traditional. So it's uh, kind of a balance of doing a little bit of gunsmithing that um, you know adds some functionality to your rifle but not completely throwing tactical accessories on there and, and making it look, you know, less original. Well, that's pretty awesome that you can retain your zero. Yeah, uh. and, it, and it also comes with the, the rear sight kind of built in. It doesn't adjust like your original rear sight would on an AK, um, but it's basically just a U-notch. Um, and I used a little bit. It's, it's a little wide for, for precision shooting, but um, who precision shoots with their AK-47 anyway? Um, but it's there in case your optic fails. You can pull it off, and you've still got a, um, a, a rear U-notch for, for using your iron sights. Hey, and they have a uh, girls and guns calendar, so you can't, uh, <laughs> <laughs> can't go wrong with that. Blackheart International, I've never uh, heard of them. 
It's actually the first time I've heard of them as well, and I think I might be purchasing more from them. Just satisfied with the shipping. So it comes with all the tools at um, an Allen wrench, and the only difficult part of the installation really um, is removing the rear sight from your AK. Um, there's a leaf spring that's basically holding it um, inside a little channel, and so you have to take a flathead screwdriver, and I've watched probably about eight YouTube videos, and people do it real quickly, and it took me a good half an hour. Um, I don't have a, a, a vise or a drill press to kind of really hold it and apply pressure, but you basically need to apply pressure down on that leaf spring and then also kind of pull, pry up, and that that sight will come right off. So what? How long is the uh, installation? So that was the most. Time, would you say? It depends on, I guess, your AK and how easy that rear sight comes off. Uh, once you get that rear sight on, it's kind of a snap. Um, you, you know, you have to do the opposite for putting the rail actually on. So I actually wrapped the Picatinny in uh, just a washcloth, so I didn't grate my hands, and I pushed straight down onto the the rail, kind of like at a 90 degree angle. So just push down on that rear leaf spring, and then you can kind of push a uh, a pin all the way through, which will hold it there. And then after you do that, there's a little set screw that you put in. Um, and so then all you do is you slide the, the new dust cover into the rail and close uh, the dust cover onto your rifle. And then there's a sliding mounting block. You just push it all the way forward against the rail and then tighten two screws and then put in roll, one roll pin to kind of keep the pressure on. And then you're done. So 45 minutes on my lunch break um, without being completely prepared with the right vices or, or anything that could help me mechanically. But uh, I'm sure if you have a, a newer rifle that's got maybe a, a not-so-rusty leaf spring, it'd go a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> so so $129 price point. Yes. Um, so what, what was your uh, final... Uh, review on this, your final thoughts and rating? I give it an 8.5. Um, you know, it's it's a lot of money for just a, a dust cover and a rail. It's it's quite innovative, though, and, you know, this is the hobby where you pay uh, exorbitant amounts of money for just a little innovative piece of anodized aluminum, so I kind of took that to heart, and um, I'm pretty satisfied with how it mounts. Uh, I just wish the installation was maybe a little bit easier. It does. I didn't mention the review, but um, if you take your AK apart a lot, there's a um, there's a lever that releases your gas tube. And it actually has to pivot um, clockwise. And um, with the A cars installed, it actually there's a kind of like a, a detent built into that lever, and it'll rub up against the A cars rail. So after um, you know just trying to take apart my handguard for the first time just so I know how to do it. I, uh, I did wear some finish off of the ACARs already after, you know, a couple days of having it on, so kind of a little bit of a heart attack. Um, so I just, you know, put some flat black back on there. And So if they if they took that into account, maybe I'd give it a 9, um, just so your rail stays kind of pristine a little bit longer. Um, yeah, but it's an AK. You get some black flat black cry line and you're good to go, right? That's right. Well, very, very cool. Good review, uh, Ryan, for sure. Uh, you can check it out on the firearmsinsider.tv. Um, so I, th I think this is pretty good. I, we, we did three reviews. We had some more queued up here, but I think for time-wise, this, this is a pretty good fit doing a, doing maybe three an episode or so. So let's uh, transition into the tech gadget or app segment. So uh, this is where, you know, we kind of uh, meld the firearms industry into the technology industry. So um, we have a iPhone app here. Uh, we talked about this a little bit about, the, uh, or a little bit on This Week in Guns. It's called the Gun Sonics Electronic Ear Protection iPhone app. So basically you, you use your iPhone, you install this app and then use uh, like a pair of earbuds 
you put those in your ear and then you put a standard non-electronic uh, pair of uh, hearing protection over your ears and over those earbuds and this will amplify the uh, like conversational audio so if there's other people on the range talking it will amplify those voices and then it will cut off any gun noises just like electronic earmuffs but this I guess has some customizability to it where you can kind of select it, fine tune it to what type of weapons you're uh, shooting. But uh, it's it's what it's nine ninety nine on the uh, Apple iTunes Store, I believe. Yep. So what what do you guys think? I kind of like that idea. Um, this would definitely fit the pocket of those who wouldn't want to spend $80, $90 for a good electronic uh, ear protection. So, right, right, cause you can buy you can buy a passive, you know, standard set of earmuffs for you know cheap as ten bucks or you know exactly. you can get a night you can get a nice set for twenty bucks. So this would uh, so for you know let, 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 let's say you get a nice set for twenty and then you spend another 10 on the app and you have all these options um, for 30 bucks total um, and you probably already have here in protection so you're really only looking at 10 yeah. Um, yeah it might might be a might be a good option it's uh, I, I'm no. just wondering when they'll come. sorry go ahead <laughs> no 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 go um, yeah, I'm just wondering when they'll actually come out with an app for the Android. I don't have an iPhone, so. Well, if you weren't an Android guy, you <laughs> wouldn't have this. <laughs> I can tell you from experience that that making an app for the uh, for apples and Androids are two completely different animals. So right. it's not flipping on a switch and just converting. You've got to basically build a second app dedicated to the language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, well, I'm actually, I, there, 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 there's some guy out there. He's like, "Well, when's it coming to BlackBerry?" <laughs> <laughs> Nokia. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying, Ryan? I'm actually curious as to, um, you know, I mean, you obviously you can't put it in your pants pocket. You where do you put your phone for optimal optimal receiving of of the ambient noise? You know. <laughs> Right, because it has to pick up the ambient noise through the built-in speaker uh, right. on the phone. So, you know, I wear I, I wear button-up shirts usually with a front, po you know, pocket. So I would think that might be a good option. Um, and it just depends how long your earbuds are. I guess you could throw it in your back pocket if the cord's long enough for you, and that that might even work. I don't I don't know. Well, I'm yeah. assuming it'll use the regular uh, free headsets, probably, and you'll use the mic that's actually there. Yeah, that's true. It might work with the uh, built-in mic on the. I guess it would if you had a pair of, a pair of earbuds in that had that built-in mic in. It would work off of that mic instead mm -hmm. of the mic on the actual phone. Yeah. I've got a pair of um, electronic earmuffs, and uh, I'm actually interested to you know see as far as a nine dollar app versus these headphones that I, cost me probably about thirty dollars. Um, I know wind is always a you have a problem if you're shooting in a windy area. The the microphones on the uh, headphones or earmuffs pick up a lot of that wind, and uh, it's kind of a little bit of a pain. Um, also. Uh, you know they're only rated to to pick up one level of uh, decibels. So if someone's shooting a 22 long rifle is actually it's not going to muffle that quite as well as say a 30 308 right next to you. So it's interesting that you're able to um, with this Gun Sonics app change it to pistols, revolvers, shotgun mm -hmm. um, for not only what you're shooting, but say um, you're shooting a pistol, someone next to you is shooting. Um, a rifle, you just change it to rifle and I'm assuming it's going to muffle both your report and the report of the person shooting next to you. Yeah, that's such a good point. Wind noise. I know that, you know, I have 
I don't, I'm not sure what brand they are, but I have a couple different electronic sets and yeah, definitely on windy, windy days. It's, it's sometimes I just shut them off because it's just so annoying. So with the ability to put, put your phone anywhere you want, like if you use a, just earbuds without a microphone, you could put your phone like inside your shirt pocket with an open, you know, an unzip jacket on, and that would negate any wind noise, but would probably still pick up the, uh, you know, your your range buddies' voices. I, mm-hmm. yeah, that, that that might have some real um, practical applications. I, I'd be, um, you know, if you're listening to this and you've tried this app out, why don't you shoot us an email at uh, podcast at firearmsinsider.tv and let us know uh, how you like the Gunsonics uh, app. Um, it says they don't have any customer reviews yet on um, on uh, iTunes, um, but it just released. Well, it says, it says it was updated October 30th, but it's version 1.01, so I, I wonder if it, that's the release version. It says it requires iOS uh, 6.0 or later. Uh, so you could use it with an iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch. Um, it says the app is optimized for iPhone 5, though. But, uh, yeah, pretty pretty interesting. Um, well, if you... Um, you know, have any ideas for a tech gadget? If you uh, have any feedback you'd like to send us, uh, you know, podcast at firearmsinsider.tv. And, uh, you know, I'd like to thank uh, Peter um, for coming on, th- you know, your uh, Mid- Midwest Industries uh, review on the firearmsinsider.tv. Uh, Check that out for sure. And uh, I guess you have one in the queue that's going to go live here any time. What, what's that one? Oh, I, uh, I did a review on the Aimpoint T1 micro dot. Um, I believe it's going to come up sometime this week. <laughs> Very cool. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. And uh, do you have any uh, in the queue, Ryan, right now? Uh, yeah, I'm working on um, reviewing a Vortex Optic, the uh, the HS um, four to sixteen with the uh, MOA reticle. I've got that on a uh, Remington uh, 700 308, the A AAC SD, and I'll also probably do a review at the same time of that uh, oh, bolt action very, rifle. Very cool, awesome. Mm-hmm. Looking looking forward to it. Well, big thank you to both of you for uh, writing up reviews for the Firearms Insider uh, TV. If um, anyone listening or watching, if you're interested in writing up your own review, uh, just shoot Mike an email, Mike at FirearmsInsider.tv, and he'll give you an outline and and uh, some t- t- tutorials on uh, how to uh, do a review, and we'll we'll get that up on the site. And the cool thing about the firearmsinsider.tv website, the reviews, you can leave your own review. So, you know, we, we talked about the Elzetta uh, light tonight, the uh, ZFL M60 flashlight, the Midwest Industries Gen 2 handguard, and the ACARS Adaptive AK Rail. So if you have experience with any of these, just head on over and you can... Um, there's a 10 point star rating on each of these reviews and you can leave your own rating and then on the comment uh, section below just tell us uh, you know just type out a little short review telling us uh, you know why it gets however many stars out of 10 so it keeps uh, you know it keeps us all honest uh, keep, you know it, it, it's a collaborative effort so you know it, it, you know I think we can really kind of uh, look at these because some people have different perspectives so you might bring up some good points that we didn't even think about when we wrote the reviews so head on over there firearmsinsider.tv and uh, you know thanks again Peter and uh, Ryan Ryan Hunter of design.com 
Oh, no problem. Thanks for having us. Thank you. And uh, if you haven't uh, checked out some of the other shows on the Firearms Radio Network, I'd like to send you over to the We Like Shooting podcast, We Like Shooting podcast.com and they they also do gun gear reviews um, on their program and at their website we like shooting.com but their podcast is on the firearms radio network and in iTunes so check them out leave them an iTunes review or we like shooting podcast.com slash iTunes and uh, just a reminder we are looking for gun and gear review hosts for the show to fill my seat right now where I'm sitting to uh, you know come in here um, you know have a panel discussion of uh, different reviews that went up on the firearmsinsider.tv different reviews that you wrote yourself um, so you know we're looking for people with a little bit of experience with uh, a few different things you know handguns rifles shotguns uh, gunsmithing reloading competition don't have to have all of those. That's why we're looking for multiple hosts so that we can fill those uh, niche expertise, uh, you know, fields uh, for each of them and have a good, uh, you know, roundtable discussion. So you can shoot me an email, uh, Jake at uh, FirearmsRadio.tv, if you're interested. And you don't have to really worry about the uh, tech side of things too much because Devin uh, has been promoted to the senior producer. He's handling the uh, podcast editing, posting, you know, all the stuff that gives me a headache. Uh, he handles it all with excellence. So a uh, big shout out to Devin. And um, that about wraps up the show for this week. So you can uh, send your questions and comments to podcast at firearmsinsider.tv. Don't forget to leave this podcast a review by going to uh, Firearms Radio, um, or I'm sorry, just search for Firearms Insider um, Gun and Gear Reviews on iTunes, and uh, check out the other shows on the Firearms Radio Network, firearmsradio.tv slash iTunes, and, um, you know, uh, shoot me uh, an email if you're interested in possibly hosting jake at firearmsradio.tv well that uh, wraps it up and we'll see you next week All right, have a good week have a good weekend